The music you are hearing is me playing the chord catalog in a 1999 recording that I made with Experimental Intermedia. As we continue this first section of the piece, which consists of the 286 three-note chords possible in one octave, we'll show you the only true score, which is just the algorithm in English. I premiered this piece at the New Music America Festival in Houston in 1985, and the actual premiere uh, on radio was in France Culture, Atelier de Création Radiophonique in 1986. Both of these performances were on organ, though the piece is more, more often played on piano. The piece is simply a list of all the possible chords in one octave with 13 keys from C to C. And the entire collection uh, consists of 8,178 chords, beginning with the two note chords, then the three note chords, the four note chords, and so forth, until finally we get to the 13 12 note chords and the one 13 note chord. We are now hearing a much later section of the piece, all of the 10 note chords, possible in one octave. There are 286 of these also, it's the same quantity, because we're just hearing the 13 keys that we didn't hear with the three note chords. Of course, the music is much slower too, because it takes a little more time to find all those notes. Playing this piece is a real challenge, and I was pleased to be able to do it, but as you might imagine, I didn't get very many invitations to play it in concert. Concert presenters are not real interested in music that is completely experimental as this was. So the piece went without being heard for some years. But then one day, I got a call from Dijon. They wanted to prepare a weekend of truly experimental music, and they knew I had a reputation for doing avant-garde things, and uh, they wondered if I wanted to suggest something. Well, this was obviously a great opportunity to go back to the chord catalog, so I said yes. I had uh, several months to prepare, so I went back to practicing the gourd catalog every day. And every day it got a little better, a little cleaner, a little faster. And by the time the concert date came up, I could do the whole piece in just a little more than one hour. The reception in Dijon was rather good, and that encouraged me, and I decided to record this uh, CD which you've been hearing. It's not really possible to sight-read this music, especially when the chords are, have more than six notes. 
So you have to just memorize the algorithm and do it in your head. That means having a lot of experience with recursive functions and knowing something about computer programming, but it's possible. Sometimes you can hardly hear the difference between one chord and another. But if you listen carefully, you can also hear little melodies between the chords as the chords gradually get higher and higher. So we are hearing melodies and counterpoint as well as a list of chords. And you can hear that the chords are gradually ascending. Can you predict when the chords will have ascended to the maximum point and the movement will have to stop? I was pleased to be able to play this piece acceptably, but I couldn't imagine that other people would be able to or would even want to. But then, one day, I received a recording from Samuel Vriesen, this younger pianist composer in Amsterdam, had studied quite a bit of mathematics as well as music, and he could do the algorithms uh, in his head almost instinctively. He was soon playing the piece better and more precisely than I was, and he made a recording of the complete chord catalog on Vondelweiser Records in 2013 in combination with his own nice chord list, which he called within thirds, within fourths. Let's hear how Samuel Vriesen plays the three note chords. What a difference! He plays the three note chords in less than a minute, whereas it took me more than three minutes. And you can hear that he is much more relaxed and precise at the same time. I learned a long time ago that just writing a good piece of music is not the end of the track. You also have to find somebody to perform it and transform the idea into something that is a good audible experience. The way Samuel Reason has transformed this piece into a good audible experience is a very good example of this. That said, I must admit that the chord catalog is uh, nonetheless more an idea than a perfectly worked out musical composition. Solowitz's famous remark is relevant here. He said, the idea is the machine that makes the art. In that sense, my chord catalog is just an idea that made some art. Or we can place it in the category of what people often call conceptual art. 
because it is basically a concept like the concept of incomplete cubes and other ideas of solid And one can think of many other kinds of conceptual art that are more documents than creations. Consider the work of Hanadar Boven, for example, or the many artists whose work involves documenting personal images or lists or maps or diary entries. In this case, I'm just documenting a list of chords. That connects with another statement that has been important for me. I want to find the music and not to compose it. Once I found this, this idea, play all these chords, it wasn't necessary to compose anything. I just had to do it. Of course, just doing it was pretty demanding. And when I or Samuel of Reason or anybody else actually sits down to the piano to actually do this, uh, it takes a lot of work. And listeners have to appreciate the fact that there was a lot of work and effort going into this process. It's not just an idea when you consider the time and effort and practice involved in preparing such a thing. A French pianist, Samuel Boré, has also played the piece several times, and he has another way of transforming it into an audible experience, quite different from me and uh, Samuel Wiesen. I want you to hear more of Wiesen's interpretation but since this is supposed to be illustrated music, I'm going to draw some of the chords at the same time. Doing the drawing is basically like, like playing the piece. I just had to memorize the sequence and practice until I could do it. But by now I can do it rather easily, and you can just watch me. By the time I do all the three note chords <clears throat> with the first nine notes, there won't be a lot of room left on the paper, and I'll have to stop. In that way, you can see and hear the logic as the numbers and the notes progress and intertwine and reflect one another. At the same time, we can hear Vriesen playing all the five notes chords possible in one octave. He has 1,287 chords to play, and I don't have far fewer to write out but his recording only takes about four minutes. So the music and the writing should take about the same amount of time. And our video will end about when the music and the writing end. 